The Tamron 24-70 version 1 was a big hit for a lot of people because of the price point and what it offered with the vibration control compared to what Nikon and Canon didn't have at the time and what Canon still doesn't have with their 24-70s and what Nikon charges over $2,000 for their VR version as well. But Tamron's newest line of lenses is awesome and this 24-70 VC G2 lens actually follows suit to what they're doing and this does have vibration control. This does have up to five stops and I actually for the most part enjoyed my time with this lens and I still would recommend it if you're on a bit more of a budget and you want to save a couple hundred dollars. With that being said I was able to take this to a state park for a couple shoots and I was able to use this at two weddings so I really know this lens inside and out right now and I don't have many complaints about it but I do want to kind of just lead off and get those out of the way because there is a lot of good about this lens as well. Now if you're using this at 2.8 um, it's not necessarily the the, the sharpest out there. And I know every lens has a sweet spot, but uh, Sigma and Tamron still aren't the best at 2.8. So it is a little bit of soft. It's, it's, it's not necessarily sharp, but you also do get a little bit more of a vignette. So it does vignette a lot more than the Canon 24 to 70. And I recently did a versus breakdown and I showed you some things with both in a video. So check that down below as well, either in the description or pinned post. So that way you can see the side by side and get a little bit more of a comparison. Then there's the issue of it hunting a little bit. Um, and I really only had that when I was extended out to 70 millimeters. Uh, the low light focusing was almost on par to how to the Canon 24 to 70 version to focus in low light when I was trying to find focus when I was in the uh, reception at a wedding. And I'd say about 90 or 95% of the time it followed suit and was pretty fast, but there were times where it did just hunt a lot. And that's just something to note. I, I don't say that that should really drive you away because once again, I do like this camera. It's just something to note. But even when I had this at 24, uh, at a 70, and I was outside on a bright day, it wasn't on like something mainly contrasty, it didn't, it still had a couple issues as well. So it could be one lens or something like that. But that's just one thing to note in case maybe someone else has that issue. You might see that a little bit, but it's not something that should really scare you from the lens. And the only other thing is the size of this bad boy right here. It's very large and that's also not a bad thing because the build quality of this compared to their other stuff before they really revamped their line, this is way more professionally built but with whatever they're using, it's a huge fingerprint magnet. But I'll tell you, this lens only costing $1,200 is absolutely great. And you're supposed to get up to five stops of vibration control or reduction, image stabilization, if however you know it. Um, it's been some to note where it says you're, you're effectively only getting three and a half stops of that, but it says five. I don't really, I'm not gonna really break that down. It does pretty well. Um, I do very well up to like a 30th handheld anyway. So something like that is just a good feature to have if you really need it. But for $1,200 compared to a $2,000 or $2,200 Nikon 24-70 and what Canon has right now, which doesn't even have it, you're still saving a lot of money for something like this. And that's why I recommend it to someone who is on a bit more of a budget compared to that other stuff, but that's what I had that other side-by-side -side review for. And I was able to test this out on the Canon 5D Mark IV, which this is it right here, the 6D Mark II, which is filming me, and actually a Canon 80D. And when I was doing the first impressions and unboxing video of this, I have an abnormal amount of people ask, how does this perform in a crop body? And I, I was like, it's really not gonna perform that much differently. And so, Talking from the Canon 80D, it effectively was the same as using a 6D Mark II or a 5D Mark IV. It performed the same. It still hunted just a little bit at 70 on there as well. Uh, nothing different. Absolutely nothing different. Um, once again, maybe if I used, you know, a Rebel like a T7i, maybe something. I don't think so at all. But the one thing I do want to stress is these new Tamrons and using dual pixel AF and everything. And I showed that in the comparison with the Canon 24 to 70 is that these do a very, very good job with dual pixel focus. And the reason autofocusing and the reason I bring that up is because it's very intensive and it's pretty quiet for what it does and how it tracks. You know, when you go forward, when you go backwards, this is the Canon 16 to 35, by the way, this actually outperformed the Canon 24 to 70. And I really enjoyed that lens, especially on the crop version, the Tamron 10 to 24 lens when using, uh, you know, on different bodies as well. So on the 80D, this performed very well, performed about the same autofocusing speeds, very good with something like this. Besides just a couple of cons, it's, it's, it's actually a, 
a very good lens. And the, obviously the, the, the one con is it might be a heavy for some people. I know some people returned it because uh, people were surprised. But to me, it's fine. I'm, I have mine on a black rapid strap and it's actually weighted very well for something like this. I do wish it was a little thinned out like the Canon 24 to 70 or uh, Nikon 24 to 70. So that was a little bit surprising. It's good. It's 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 a it's a trustworthy lens for the most part. And I wouldn't let the 70 millimeter thing uh, hold anyone back or anything. But that's about it. There's a lot of coatings on this lens to you know correct uh, out, you know ghosting, chromatic aberrations, and everything. And I shot this up into the sun. Did a very good job. The glass that Tamron's using and how they're building this stuff is actually doing very well and I'm very happy with what they're doing. Um, I don't know if you care about the color matching or anything. This is just a little bit darker than the Canon body and also uh, the same thing. It doesn't match well to the bodies. Like another example, the Canon SL2 and the Tamron 10 and 24 doesn't match well, but that shouldn't really be a look game. But if you have any questions about the Tamron 24 to 70 lens, once again, on a crop sensor, full frame sensor, it performed the same, it performed very well, it's fast. The low light could be just a scotch better to step up with Canon and everything because it did have a little bit of hunting issues in low light. But when it achieved autofocusing, it was always fast and snappy and nothing to really complain about. So in the overall, probably just a little bit slower in some regards, definitely better for video and for $1,200, I think it's a, it's a good buy if you don't want to spend the 500 or so dollars to go up to the next Canon or a couple hundred more to get the Nikon version. You need vibration control, you want a well-built lens, check out this Tamron 24-70 VC G2 lens. All the information will be down below. I'd highly recommend something like this. And I know a lot of people are returning their Sigma gear, their Sigma 24-70 to get this lens. And I can see why. Personally, I'd still probably take a Canon 24-70 version two over something like this um, because I thought it was probably just a little bit better. Uh, but besides that, I've got no more complaints with a lens like this.